Evening, everyone. Those of uh, you who are here <clears throat> local, as well as those who are joining us uh, live here on Facebook, um, throughout many places in the United States and also throughout the world, welcome to another Peaceful Solution Character Education Teacher Certification Training Course. And I hope you brought your acceptance unit. That's what we're going to be picking up on today as uh, the previous teacher brought forth, Chris brought forth that he finished out the chapter seven and what I have learned in the uh, character unit, which is the first unit of the five intermediate units of the character education program. And of course that, that unit laid out the foundation for us for what we're going to be building up to at the end of this. And, and really it's not just the end of the intermediate series, get into the advanced series with building moral excellence and then we have the parenting uh, the workplace manual and so forth but but it kind of laid the foundation kind of like uh, you know as in building a house you know you want to have a strong solid foundation to build on and that character unit does this because everything that we're talking about and that we're stacking on top of that foundation from there ties back into the development of a positive character and it's very important for the students to understand what character is and to differentiate between positive and negative character, what helps to shape a, character, a person's character, the fact that <clears throat> unlike fixed traits that a person is born with, uh, that as we covered once established genetically, they, they can't be changed, um, character on the other hand can be changed, as well as understanding the difference between character and personality, okay? And if you just um, look back uh, here um, to the introduction, no, it's the first lesson here, lesson plan. Uh, oh, not in lesson plan. Let me see here. LP, this is in the character unit. Hopefully you brought your character units with you too. <laughs> so that we can go back and refer to it because it's necessary that we we be able to <coughs> refer back to this character unit because we're going to be tying a lot of this uh, together uh, back in kind of like when you're um, uh, I don't know if you've ever oh here it is in the first procedure if you've ever done any type of, of stitching or sewing uh, you know and some of the there are others probably thousands of different ways of uh, making stitches but some stitches you know, once you get that first stitch set, the next stitch loops through and ties into the first stitch. And then that stitch loops in and ties into the second stitch and so on and so on. So if your first stitch isn't set very well, um, then it's possible that that whole thing can come unraveled. And so that's why it's necessary to have a strong foundation in understanding what character is. And if you look back to LP1E in your character unit, and if you look at procedure one, in the second, um, well, we'll just read the whole thing there. It says, inform students that they will begin studying from the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. This unit will encourage and develop the development, excuse me, of positive moral character. Explain to students that during the course of this program, they will also learn that developing a positive moral character is the first step. Okay, it's the first step towards accepting themselves and others, okay? And that's what we're covering in this second unit of the, P of the intermediate series. Excuse me, acceptance. Accepting themselves and others, controlling their behavior, that ties into the self-control unit, unit, unit three. Respecting society, uh, respect unit four, and the environment, and making responsible choices, which is uh, the fifth unit of the intermediate series. All right, and so that's why it's important that we, we have these things and be able to tie tie both of them both of them together um, as we move forward in this unit here. But in case you're just joining us here, I'll just kind of refresh your memory. In all of the in all of the units, all five of the intermediate series series units, you have a section entitled "How to Use This Program." And it has under there teacher's manual, the purpose objectives, procedures, <clears throat> student's handbook, role of the teacher, and so forth. That's all the same in all of the units. 
Okay, that doesn't change from unit to unit. Okay, so we won't necessarily have to read that in every unit. Where you start getting into the difference there is the uh, is the introduction to the unit because that's tailored specific to that unit. In this case, acceptance. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start on page lesson plan one, page A. This is uh, this one spelled out in this one instead of LP, but that's essentially what it what it means. Lesson plan page one or lesson plan one page a all right and we're gonna look at unit two acceptance and this of course is the introduction to the unit and uh... Move this out of the way there it says there we live in a world we currently live in a world where the inability to accept ourselves and those around us has led to problems ranging from depression and low self-worth if you look at that word inability you know, what do you think that word inability means? Anybody? I want to get some input from the audience. <laughs> yes, just speak it up loud. Yeah, there's no mic. Just speak it out loud. Unable to do something, okay? Inability. Anybody else? You said what? Okay. All right. I'm not able to hear you, <laughs> but it's oh, a lack of skills. Okay, a lack of skills. Yeah, the inability to do something, not not having the skills or not having the 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 knowledge to do something. The word inability there, and that's not going to be on your test. <laughs> uh, the word inability there means a lack of sufficient power. Now everybody remembers because we covered it tons of times in this uh, in unit one. What how would you simply define power? How would you define power in the peaceful solution? What is defined as power? Just yell it out so we can all hear. That's right. Knowledge is power. Always remember that. Knowledge is power. So when you look at this and just kind of, you know, when you look at definitions, they don't necessarily tie into what we've covered in the peaceful solution. But you should be able to make these correlations as we move forward. The lack of sufficient power. Remember, knowledge is power. So the lack of, essentially, knowledge. Okay? That creates a person's the inability to do something. Let me see here. Lack of education. Uh, education in the facts. Uh, the education in the facts to be able to make positive, sound, moral choices. And when a person doesn't have the ability or the knowledge to make sound moral choices, when they don't have the information, then they, of course, they make very immoral choices. If you think about that road less traveled that we covered in chapter one of the character unit, you'll see there that it leads to many risk-taking behaviors. All right. Let me just find my notes here. All right, the lack of sufficient power, resources. Now, resources can be defined as information or expertise. Information or expertise. Uh, it also means the source of. So the lack of sufficient power, resources, or capacity. All right, so the inability to accept ourselves, all right, because that's what we always cover, in these lessons we look at ourselves first and then we look at how we can apply the concept towards interacting with others but it always comes from within it always starts from within the individual because the goal is to change the heart and the mind of the person okay so we currently live in a society where the inability to accept ourselves and those around us has led to problems ranging from depression and low self-worth. Now, the reason I read all of that was because the reason people have an inability to accept themselves ties back into the fact of them not being properly educated. Okay? They're not they're not essentially bad people. 
you know, they're not essentially evil people. They're not essentially crazy people because they, they might be in a situation where they are going through depression or low self-worth worth, or they are violent, right? Uh, it's just that they have not been taught, first and foremost, how to value themselves. And remember everything that, that ties into the development of a healthy self-concept or a healthy self-worth. If you hold your spot there and look back to um, in your character unit, LP2A, LP2A. And this talks about the effects of character within the family. And this is under the uh, section entitled, Note to the Teacher. The effects of character within the family. In the first chapter there it says, the role of family is paramount to our self-concept and how we interact with others. Okay, so the role of the family. And if you remember what we covered there um, on page four, if I'm not mistaken, in chapter one. Yes, page four on chapter one, the uh, character, everyone has it, but where does it come from? It says, whether the character we have is positive or negative depends upon many different factors. These factors include genetics, family values, influences, experiences, choices, and environment. All right, so remember, family values, right? Family values, influences, experiences, choices, and the environment. Well, when you think back to the family, right? You have to take into consideration the values that the family starts to instill within the mind of, of the child, okay? The things, like, like the previous teacher said, Chris said in the last class, you know, in finding a friend, you might find that you have similar values, but those values could be you both like to rob banks, right? Uh, you both might have values of, of attaining things, uh, maybe possessions or whatnot, uh, but you might go about doing it in a way that uh, uh, is done through stealing, is done through trespassing, is done through deception, or your family could train you in the, uh, achieving those things through working hard for it, making money in an honest way, saving and purchasing it. You see, so you have two goals, but two different ways in which to achieve them. Well, part of that's going to be, it's going to come from your character, but it's going to be uh, that initiation of that is going to come from the values. And then taking into consideration your, your environment, right? Because your environment is what's around you. It helps to shape and mold your character. If a person grows up in an area where their environment is full of violence and, and, and you know, uh, disrespect, well, that's how they're going to start to interact with other people, whether it's, you know, in, in a workplace or in a school environment or whether it's how they go about obtaining things, okay, uh, or responding to something that uh, displeases them. And of course, let's not forget about the experiences. The experiences, um, you think about that, I, I was thinking, a person who grows up in a city where they, <laughs> there's a lot of gun gunfire, you know, drive-by shootings and, and things like that. When they hear a gunshot, you know, later on in life, they might have a tendency to duck, right? And if you grow up in an area where that's not a big thing, you know, you might ask them, well, what in the world are you ducking for? You know, it's just a backfire from a car, <laughs> you know? Might not even be a gunshot. It could be a backfire from a car or a, or a door slamming or something like that. Well, the, those, those experiences, they help to shape, uh, of course, your character, but also how you respond to things, right? If you have experience in responding to something in a positive way, well, then that's how you're going to respond. If your experience is responding to it in a negative way, well, that's how you're going to respond in, in that regard. So all these things go back into uh, shaping a person's self-concept or their self-worth, and that's what I want you to get out of that. In fact, if you go over to page 40 in your character unit 2, we're, we're just, and again, remember, we're just tying all of this into what we're reading in the uh, chapter 1 here of the acceptance unit. Uh, page 40 in the first paragraph, remember we're talking about all in the family on this one here. It says, when someone grows up in a home where there is physical and sexual abuse, their self-concept and character development will be affected. Okay, their self-concept 
and character development will be affected. And it gives a definition there of what self-concept is. Self-concept is the way you see yourself. Now, if you see yourself as somebody who has value, you know, if a student sees that they can uh, uh, contribute to society in a positive way, if they are appreciative of their positive character traits and will work to strengthen those traits, right, then they will have a healthy self-concept. They will have, uh, they will, they will have self-worth, right? So it's the way you see yourself. It is very important to have a positive concept of who you are because notice here, people with a negative self-concept tend to be sad, depressed, angry, and resentful. And of course, those are, those are negative emotions. They, these emotions can lead to negative character traits such as being hateful, aggressive, and revengeful. These negative character traits often result in violent behaviors. Now, if you look back over to Lesson Plan 1, page A, you'll see how both of these things tie perfectly in together. As we just got finished reading in that first paragraph, the inability, remember the, the inability is the lack of sufficient power, or in this case, we're talking about knowledge. Knowledge is power. The, the lack of education uh, to understand what a person needs to do to improve their character and as it, in effect when you improve your character you improve your value both to yourself and to others right because now you're going to be a benefit to other people because you have something to contribute right uh, if, if two people are arguing you can actually bring about a peaceful solution in that situation instead of yeah yeah go ahead and hit them oh, are you gonna let them talk to you that way right when we were growing up, they were people who were, they were called instigators, right? Yeah, they were instigators. They instigated situations and fights. Why? Because they wanted to see people fight. They wanted to see people, you know, destroy each other. Right? That, that, that's, the, that's the environment that they grew up in, and that's the things that they like to see. But when you develop a positive character, and when you teach your students to develop and value the development of a positive character, now they have something beneficial to bring to the table. So... But notice here, when they don't have that, it leads to problems ranging from depression and low self-worth to violence and war. Now, these two things, depression, low self-worth, violence and war, are, they are, they're symptoms of what we just covered, right? They're not the cause, they're the symptoms because of a lack of education and a lack of value. Let's just look, I wanna show you something here because we're dealing with these intermediate units deal with uh, children in the age range of 11 to 13 years old, okay? 11, 13, 11, 14. Depression among teens, and this is, um, this is a statistic that was taken from, uh, I think it was the, from the latest Pew Research from 2017, and it shows here in 2017, 13% of US teens ages 12 to 17, or 3.2 million of them, <clears throat> said they had experienced at least one major depressive episode in the past year. And that's up from 8%, uh, or 2 million, in 2007. So just 10 years ago, and apparently every 10 years they do these things. And that, of course, was according to a Pew Research Center analysis of data from the 2017 National Survey on Drug Use and Health. And it's interesting because in society today, you know, the solution, I say, solution is, you know, not work to, to train and to educate, to teach, but let's go ahead and give the child a, a prescription. Let's go ahead and give them a drug, you know, to make these symptoms of depression go away, okay? And it's uh, interesting because I've seen some of these side effects that have come about, in fact, they, they read them off whenever you watch watching the television and they give a, a drug and then they also have to give you the side effects too, but they do it really fast and they show a lot of pictures, <laughs> so you're kind of distracted. But um, this was uh, uh, one of the statistics that were, a study, I'm sorry, that was showing the, the, um, uh, the side effects of antidepressants. Uh, and not just particularly the antidepressants, but antidepressants 
given to children or teenagers. And it says, because of the risk of suicide from depression, it is difficult to establish a clear casual relationship between antidepressant use and suicide. Well, researchers speculate about a variety of potential reasons for an increased risk. In some children, antidepressants may also trigger anxiety, agitation, hostility, restlessness, or impulsive behavior. Remember what we talked about in regards to impulsive behavior. Uh, impulsive behavior is doing things without considering the consequences. These effects may indicate that the child's depression is getting worse or that the child is starting to develop suicidal thoughts. Now the goal here with these things uh, is supposed to be to take away the child's tendency to be in a depressive state, right? And we know, as we've learned in the Peaceful Solution, uh, these actions that a person who is in a depressive state, uh, they originate from the thoughts. The thoughts lead to the feelings and the feelings lead to the actions. So in order to turn that whole boat around, you've got to start with changing the thoughts, changing the mind of the person, okay? And like we said, you know, some of these things, you know, they, the majority of them, they start, a lot of times they start within the family. You know, a person might not have been shown that, that, that care, you know, that, that love, that, you know, that um, appreciation within the family from their youth. So they started to seek it outside of the home. And this is the time period when children do that. Well, you know, problem with that is if the, if the influences that they're associating themselves with outside of the home um, aren't founded in strong moral character, then they're going to lead them down an even darker road. And a lot of times people who are in a kind of a, a come out of the abusive situations, people can kind of pick up on that and they'll end up taking advantage of them even more so because they're already in a weakened state. Okay. And so we have to kind of, and, and, and when you're teaching children, you know, you're going to, in most cases, you're going to run into situations as a teacher. Um, they're going to be students who are dealing with or battling depression. You know, they're going to be battling low self-worth. They're going to be battling having an unhealthy concept of themselves because they possibly, because they, they live in a home where dysfunctionality is very predominant. Okay, so keep those things in mind because it's necessary to kind of know what you're up against in, um, when you teach these classes. <clears throat> All right, it says, children who are unable to appreciate their positive character traits and who do not think that life has meaning and value will inevitably make decisions that will rob them of a purposeful and fulfilling life. Okay, a purposeful and fulfilling, fulfilling life. Um, let's see here. I've got some notes here. Um, children who are unable to appreciate their positive character. Remember, remember what we covered there on page 21 about uh, the character unit there, uh, the importance of accentuating the positive and eliminating the negative, right? It, 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 I, look, I understand it could be very easy to look at yourself and just see the things that are wrong, right? just see the areas in your life where you're having a hard time. It could be very easy to do that, but what we want to get a person, the students to understand is, okay, you need to acknowledge that there might be areas in your life where you are having a hard time or where you might have a, you know, um, a, negative, a negative character trait. Now you've got to focus on doing the opposite in order to fix it. Don't focus on, on the bad thing. We know that the bad thing is there. Our focus is on doing the positive thing to turn that around, to fix that, to fix that negative character trait. So that's why it's important to remember to accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative. And in that regards, they will appreciate their positive character traits and not be so worried about the things that, that are negative because over time as they work to practice this, the, 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 these concepts as taught in the Peaceful Solution, they're going to and examining, examining themselves and um, studying and practicing, they're going to eliminate, uh, eventually eliminate those negative traits. All right. So um, as we read there, appreciate their positive character traits and who do not think that life has meaning. 
Um, let me see here. Chapter 5. I got a note there. Chapter 5 in the character unit. That life has meaning. Um, well, we won't read the whole thing, but just, just for your notes there, uh, that whole chapter deals with, um, oh, not the character unit, in this unit, we're going to cover that, um, understanding that there is purpose to it all, okay? Uh, because, you know, sadly, and, and I've talked to some young people, and I've asked them, you know, what, you know, what goals do you have for your future? What is it that you plan to do with your life, all right? And a lot of them don't really have an idea. You know, they're just, I don't know, I haven't really thought about it, right? Well, it's at this time where we really start, we really need to encourage them to start thinking about those things. You know, because before you know it, you know, they're going to be 18, 19, 20 years old and out of the house, and they're going to be responsible for making their own decisions. It's like uh, Chris said in the previous class, it's necessary to instill certain characteristics of responsibility in the child when they are at home and being in an environment where they can be trained so that when they are an adult and they're on their own they will have those characteristics already instilled in them and they will work they will be responsible they will be honest they will strive to obtain things in a in a lawful and an honest way but when they don't when they have this low self-worth and they don't accept themselves right then they they miss out on the value in themselves and um, uh, I'm sorry let me read that again they don't think that life has meaning and value and will inevitably make decisions that will rob them of a purposeful uh, fulfilling life that word inevitably there it simply means um, incapable of being avoided incapable of being avoided in other words you're going to encounter it right so they will inevitably make decisions that will rob them of a purposeful and meaning, uh, meaning, a purposeful, fulfilling life. Mixing up my words there. All right, let's see here. And remember value on chapter one, page six of the character unit. Well, let's look at the second um, paragraph there. It says, not only can they effectively remove themselves from the joys that life offers when they disregard true moral values now remember we covered that on page page eight of the character unit in chapter one true moral values those moral values are simply like a line that separates right from wrong and helps a person to be able to distinguish between right and wrong but also but they also take by teasing and bullying that joy from others okay because remember people who encounter these things themselves whether it's in the home, whether it's in school, whether it's in their environment, they eventually start to um, imitate those same things. In other words, they start to practice those same things. If they're bullied, well, they oftentimes become the bullies themselves. And you'll see this in a lot of cases where you have a, a child that's bullied and come to find out that, you know, one of the parents is actually bullying the child or even one of the siblings is actually bullying the child. Well, they start to do that same thing to others who they think are weaker uh, than them. Okay, so you, you, you kind of get a little insight into a person's life, uh, even without being there, right? Uh, you can't make a full judgment, but it gives you a little bit of insight because when you learn these things, you start to know some of the things that lead to the behaviors of an individual. You know, you know that there's a thought, an emotion, and an action. And you can kind of get an idea of how these things lead one step to another. And, it, and really that makes you valuable as a, as a listener and as a, you know, a, person, a friend. You know, somebody who can help another person because you have an idea of where these things started from. And you kind of can get to know what to do to fix them. But anyway, it says, but they also take by teasing and bullying that joy from others. Keep in mind, chapter 5, page 105 of the... Um, character unit and talking about the ripple effect you know the ripple effect character and society because when they have those things that that are done to them they start doing them to others that ripples outward those people who are bullied well they might not necessarily bully somebody but they might start to develop an, a negative concept of themselves and as a result make decisions that could bring harm to themselves and others okay 
So let's look here. It says, this unit of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program will teach children the importance of accepting themselves and the physical and moral characteristics that make them unique. Okay, and that's important because, um, like we covered in, 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 the, in the character unit, so much stress is put upon the outward appearance of the individual. And sadly, and this is not anything new, but it's even more prominent in today's day and age in the, in the digital world, or the world of social media. Because a lot of young people, and it's not limited to just young people, it's, it's old people too, it's adults, it's older people, um, but they, 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 they base their self-worth or their self-concept on what they see in their environment around them. Right? What they see on the internet, what they see on the television, what they see in the movies, what, <coughs> what they see being presented from their, from their friends. Okay? And in a lot of cases, these things are just, they're make-believe. In probably about 100% of the cases, you know, they're make-believe. Right? Uh, it, it's, it's made, it's a fabrication of a, of a joyous lifestyle. Well, when they compare themselves to something that's not real right then they're sadly let down when they try to duplicate that and they realize you know it was just an empty shell you know they're not achieving this success or they're not gaining this popularity or they don't really have friends that really appreciate them you know so the goal is to work on them appreciating their own physical and moral characteristics that make them a unique individual that word unique there means being without like or equal, okay, um, and, and this is a broad definition, but it means being without like or equal, distinctively, distinctively, you know, and every single one of us are distinct in our differences, right? We might have similar personalities, but even in our similar personalities, you might have two people that both like hamburgers, you know, they both like hamburgers with cheese, but one person like ketchup, Heavens forbid, one person likes mayo, right? I'm, that's just a mayo thing. I don't like mayo. <laughs> but, but there's nothing wrong with it, okay? But they're very distinct. It's like fingerprints, right? Uh, everybody's fingerprint is unique to them, okay? And, and it's the same with uh, physical and moral characteristics. And there's nothing wrong with people being unique or different, right? That, that kind of helps. That's kind of the spice of life, the variety, right? They say variety is the spice of life. Uh, part of another part of the definition is able to be distinguished from all others of its class or type. Able to be distinguished from all others of its class or, or type. And in this case, the, the human race, right? Humankind, mankind. Um, and so being able to appreciate that will start the process of people being able to see that, you know, just because I am different, it, it might be in physical appearances, right? It might be some something that really causes them to stand out and there are a lot of things in in life that can occur genetically that can cause somebody to look completely different on than the average person doesn't have anything to do with their character and that's the goal the goal is to focus on the character um in addition to this they will learn to appreciate the uniqueness of others and the value of tolerance and that's one thing that i've I've noticed in people who accept themselves, who accept themselves and appreciate the value of themselves or even their unique characteristics and their ability to be a benefit to others, it's a lot easier for them to accept the uniqueness or differences of others, right? And that's one of the things, kind of like one of the things you see with, with um, educating yourself, right? Because you realize not everything is just you know, cookie cutter. You know, as human beings, we're not all cookie cutter, right? We all are different. We all have different looks about us, uh, ways we talk, the way we, uh, even what we talked about in the, the character unit about the, the different customs and, and traditions and things like that, the cultural things in society and so forth. Um, it, it doesn't make a person uh, bad just because they might have a different way of doing something or a different custom or culture than you. It just means they're a little bit different. Right, and so when we can teach them to uh, to accept those things about themselves, it makes it a little bit easier for them to accept that about others. 
but it shows that um, they will appreciate the uniqueness of others and notice here the value of tolerance because intolerance has caused a lot of as we call it in the peaceful solution uh, bad scenes in society uh, we've covered some of those uh, things in um, uh, the negative leadership in the character unit there and with that intolerance caused it actually brought uh, suffering harm and death to millions if not billions of people uh, throughout the the many years of mankind okay so we have here other concepts presented in this unit are intolerance leads to hatred and violence and remember what we covered there about the inability to accept ourselves it leads to those very things um, uh, violence and war uh, acceptance of others requires moral respectful and effective communication okay remember what morals they relate to rules uh, respectful is just showing care and concern and effective communication and, and we can't take that that too lightly when it comes to communication right because a lot of things have been lost in what's called lost in translation okay and uh, sometimes you get that when you have language barriers and um, um, sometimes a word that you might say or a phrase that you might say in your country might mean something completely different in another country, right? And so it's, it's, it's uh, important to understand, you know, how to communicate effectively, you know, not just in dealing with uh, language barriers in, in different countries, but in dealing with your friends and dealing with your family. You know, it's necessary to understand how to communicate in a positive way, but to communicate effectively as well because Remember, communication is just the exchange of information. And if you're talking and nobody's understanding you, you haven't communicated effectively. Or if somebody's talking to you and you're not listening, well, they haven't communicated to you effectively, okay? So there's got to be a speaker, there's got to be a listener, okay, in order for communication uh, to be successful. Another concept that's going to be um, covered is positive communication can result in friendships that are caring and supportive. Caring and supportive. Um, this word here, supportive, means to keep from fainting, yielding, or losing courage. Remember we talked about the word encourage, right? To encourage your students or to encourage one another. It also means to comfort, to maintain at a desired level, to uphold or defend as valid, or right to uphold or defend as valid or right so caring and supportive and when you think about something that's supportive um, you know or, or a support system right uh, positive friends uh, positive family members uh, th these classes that you go to they support the development and the maintaining of a positive character okay and so you want to make sure that you surround yourself with people who are going to be supportive of your goal in developing a positive character and becoming someone who is morally excellent. All right. Um, everyone, another concept is going to be everyone's life has value, purpose, and meaning. All right. Everyone's life has value, purpose, and meaning. Having a purpose in life and positive moral goals will enable them to avoid negative risk taking behaviors. Um, and of course, this is, this gives a person a direction um, in life or something to aim for, uh, to attain or to achieve. Having positive moral goals. Goals are very important. Um, just the act of setting goals is a very uh, powerful act, right? Uh, and one of the first steps in uh, achieving your goals, even as we're going to learn in the Peaceful Solution here, when we get to that chapter uh, in the acceptance unit, is writing them down. Writing your goals down. You know, that starts the process in your, in your mind and in your subconscious mind of taking that thought and making it a real thing. You know, and then taking into consideration the morals that have to be, the moral values that have to be incorporated in achieving those goals. Remember, we never want to, uh, our values should never um, contradict with 
our positive character, right? Or the achieving of our goals should not conflict with our positive moral character. And if they do, then we have to reevaluate how we go about achieving those things, right? Um, because there's always a choice in the matter. We're never, we, you know, we can never say, well, we were forced to steal. You know, that was the only way I was going to do this is I, I had to steal this in order to accomplish this goal. No, there's always a choice, okay? And we want to remind our students that is that we, you know, they always have a choice to do the wrong thing or the right thing. They should always set their minds on doing the right thing. And then lastly, here, uh, uh, under the uh, concepts presented in this unit, a moral character will enable positive problem-solving uh, and sound decision-making skills. Positive problem-solving, and, and I underlined in my book, positive problem-solving skills. Some people think that they can solve a problem with two fists, right? Uh, why? Because that's the way they've been taught. You know, if somebody's bullying you, well, you know, bully them back. You got to be the bigger bully in some cases. They bring a stick, you bring a bigger stick. Okay, well, remember what the author said to, that he heard in the presence, uh, uh, that was said in his presence, two wrongs don't make a right. So we always want to result to positive problem-solving skills and, of course, sound decision-making skills as well, which are... are um, Sensible, sensible choices, you know, or what society calls common sense. Uh, <laughs> it can be something that's common if it's taught throughout society as a whole, but again, these things are, are not. You know, society has gotten away from teaching morality in the homes, in the school, and upholding these things even in the workplaces, okay? So we're, our goal is to kind of help people to see the value of it to where they want to start to do this once again. All right, so those are some of the concepts there that are going to be taught um, in this unit here. Um, let's look at the last paragraph there. It says, as educators and role models, we must teach children to coexist in peace and harmony. Only when children expect, accept excuse me, and respect themselves will they learn to truly accept and respect others. It is the hope of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program that our schools can become a safe and peaceful place for our children devoid of fear of the fear, animosity, and intolerance that are plaguing classrooms and schools around the world. And <clears throat> when the morals, when the moral values from this character education program can be taught to our youth today, there will be hope for them, a brighter future, and, a, and great concern for all humanity. Okay, great concern for all humanity. And, you know, it wasn't that long ago, I think um, probably about um, at least four to, four, to, four to seven years ago, um, I mean, school shootings, mass shootings, not just school shootings, uh, but mass shootings were so commonplace that it was not. It would not be surprising. I don't think we. I don't think we really went at least a week or two where there wasn't some report in the news that there was another mass shooting. Okay. Uh, even even today, in the last couple of days here, even in Texas here, there have been uh, in the last several weeks there have been at least a half a dozen mass shootings that have taken place. Okay. Uh, why is this? Because people aren't taught to first value and appreciate themselves they don't have a healthy self-worth and self-confidence or self-concept and as a result they don't respect their lives and therefore they don't respect the lives of others remember respect is merely to appreciate uh, to the belongings of others or to recognize the belongings of others uh, and them and other people and to treat them with consideration care and concern so lastly, again, that paragraph, it says, when moral values from this character education program uh, can be taught to our youth today, there will be hope for them, a brighter future, and great concern for all humanity. And, of course, that reminds me of what we covered in uh, Chapter 5 of that ripple effect, you know, all humanity, because in the journey of a 1,000 miles, starting with the first step, uh, morality going throughout the world, 
it starts with the first person, right? It starts with the first person taking and valuing this information and then starting to put it to practice in their lives and then sharing it with other people. And one at a time, you know, it might seem like it's a mission impossible, but it's not. Like we've mentioned in previous classes, you know, many great movements started with the idea of one person, right? And they, they held fast to that idea. They didn't back down from it. They held fast to the achievement of those positive goals. And eventually we saw it spread throughout uh, a, a village or a community and then the nation and eventually, in some cases, globally. So we can't underestimate the, um, the power of setting and working to achieve positive moral goals. All right? They can ripple outward and affect society. Okay, so let's look, um, let's move forward here to page L, lesson plan one, page C. Lesson plan one, page C. In case you're just joining us, we are in the uh, acceptance unit, unit two of the um, Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. And we're covering here chapter one on lesson plan one, page C, accepting me accepting you under note to the teacher. And it says here, in this lesson, students will learn the importance of accepting the positive characteristics in themselves and others. Now, as a teacher, this can be your opportunity to kind of, you know, get the students to dive into their own person, right? Because you have some people who, you know, I, I remember growing up and being around who they, they didn't really have a healthy self-concept. You know, they kind of reminded me of some of these things that I read here. They kind of seemed to always be in a depressive state. They were always down. Uh, you know, they dressed in drab clothes because that's the way they wanted to show everybody that they were feeling, you know. And, and they just kind of seemed like they, they walked around in life with a with a cloud over, over their head, a dark cloud raining over their head. Well, you know, you might encounter something like this in the classroom, and it's your opportunity to kind of get the students to look into themselves and, and really try to get them to find at least, at least one or two things that they consider positive about themselves, right? You know, give your opportunity to go around the classroom and ask, or, or maybe even, you know, after class or before class, you know, what, what is something that you see Give me at least one thing that you can say is positive about yourself, that you like about yourself, that you appreciate about yourself, right? And that can give you kind of a door opener to work with them and helping them to see that, you know, you can take that one thing and start to develop and build other positive characteristics, okay? Because sometimes it's just, it's just someone showing, you know, them that they care. Someone showing them that they are important. Someone showing them that they are valuable and this is how they can become more valuable in their own eyes and in the eyes of others. And of course, as we know, it's you know, not by becoming a better dresser or uh, having more money or driving the school or, or you know, in your neighborhood at 14 they're not driving, but um, uh, you know, driving around in a, with a fancy bike or whatever. No, it's by improving your character so that you can be, uh, be a problem solver, right? Uh, problem solving, I'm telling you that, to me, that's one of the best skills, you know, to be able to solve a problem. Companies pay billions of dollars a year, you know, for firms to come in and solve problems between employees or employees and employers, okay? And... Uh, some of those things might work. Some of them might work temporarily, right? But they're really not focusing on improving the character. And that's one of the things that the Peaceful Solution has, like a one-up that most of these other programs or affiliations or companies don't have, changing the character. Because what occurs when they leave that company? They're going to take those problems with them. Well, if they develop a positive character, they're going to take solutions with them if they leave that company. In fact, they're going to leave the company better than what, they, uh, what it was when they first got there. So it says here, they will learn that everyone is unique and everyone owns the right to be respected. Okay, get that there. Everyone owns the right to be respected as a human being regardless of their external 
inherent differences. Okay, and remember those external inherent differences. Remember, uh, keep in mind what we covered in um, page four: the fixed traits in the chat in the character unit, the fixed traits that people that people have. You can't you can't change your external differences, right? And really, those things should be completely irrelevant when you're interacting with other people. Okay, um, this word inherent means existing as a natural and permanent quality of something or someone. All right, existing as a natural or permanent um, quality of something or someone. Uh, even that word quality shows that it's not necessarily something bad, right? Um, and, and, and people have different things. You know, some people are, might be very short. Some people might uh, suffer from something called uh, albinism you know, or albino, you know, in certain countries, they look at people who, uh, and that's just a, a lack of uh, melanin in the skin that causes them to get darker and so forth, and it's in the skin and the hair, and in some countries, those people are, uh, who, who suffer from that, or ha who have that genetic difference, I should say, um, uh, they look, they're looked down upon, you know, they're kind of outcast and shunned. Now, does that mean that that person can't be a great friend, that they can't contribute to society, that they aren't honest, you know, that they couldn't be a positive leader just because of how they look on the outside? Heavens no. <laughs> They're just as capable as anybody else as contributing to society and being a positive influence to other people, okay? But it's people who have a lack of education, who have this intolerance that start to uh, make others think that just because you look a little different than me, you're not as valuable as I am, all right? And that's what we're working through, education or re-education in the minds of, of society, people in society, to tell them that no, those external differences are not, are not important. It's what's on the inside. But in order to see what's on the inside, you have to be educated. All right, so it says, many teenagers worry about things they cannot change. They worry about their external characteristics, uh, the way their bodies look their height, whether their ears or nose are too small or too large, or whether their skin is too dark or too light. Instead, students will learn to focus on the internal characteristics in themselves and others. You know, and it's pretty sad because people have gone through, gone to extremes to try to change these external characteristics. Um, and sadly, sometimes they've done permanent damage to themselves uh, externally and sometimes uh, internally by trying to change who they are on the outside, right? Uh, and, and they can't go back and undo those things or they have to spend a lot more money trying to do that, right? Um, you know, I've read about people who have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in plastic surgery you know, on their face trying to get a particular image of what they want to look like. Uh, and, and really that image was based on a plastic doll. <laughs> but they've, they've gone through so many, I can't remember how many surgeries, more than anybody should have to go through, right? And so many hundreds of thousand dollars to change that, that at this point of time in their life, their bodies have become, their faces have become so disintegrated to where it's actually starting to fall apart now because it can't support the artificial things that have been put in there because they're trying to change the external appearances, right? And so, uh, but it takes, it takes time to get people to kind of see through what society places in the eyes of the student, of the, of the individual as what's important or what's beautiful, right? Um, I, remember, I remember my parents saying, you know, um, you know beauty's on the inside, right? Uh, it's not just skin deep. It's on the inside. It's who a person is. And when you learn these characteristics in the Peaceful Solution, you really do begin to appreciate people for who they are, right? Not what they look like, but who they are, their character. So I said, instead, instead of those external things, students will learn to focus on the internal characteristics. Um, this word internal is that which is situated, existing, or located on the inside of something, uh, relating or belonging to or existing within the mind, 
existing within the mind. Okay, not always something you can see immediately, just like character. You can't see what a person's character is immediately upon first meeting a person. What you see initially is their personality. Character takes a little bit of time. You can tell by their choices over a period of time what type of character that person has. So students will learn to focus on the internal characteristics um, in themselves and others. They will learn to accept the superficial differences in others as well. Superficial is uh, concerned only with what is obvious or apparent. Um, it's not thorough or complete. Kind of like, um, like, a, like what you see superficially when you look at an iceberg, right? You just see that little part that's sticking out of the water. You know, that's the superficial part of the iceberg or even what's under the ice, <clears throat> right? Um, the rest is deep within the water and it's the same with people. Uh, let's see here. They will begin to look beyond the surface or the positive moral attributes that help make each person unique. Again, remember accentuating the positive and the neg uh, eliminating the negative. Additionally, students will understand why it is important to shift their focus to the things they can control within their lives. And this is a part of what acceptance is. You know, there are some things that you do have control over, right? The choices that we make, the thoughts that go in and out of our mind, what we choose to focus on, what we choose to eliminate, and, uh, you know, of course, how we choose to develop our character and interact with others. Those are things we can focus that we can control within our lives. By achieving this awareness, they will avoid feelings of depression and lack of self-worth and instead attain satisfaction and success in their lives based upon positive moral character. And of course, again, that, um, that, um, that success, and many people measure success differently, but as they, you know, they, they, they go through this course, their values and concept of success also begins to shift, right? Because they start to see the importance of, of what they can become by developing a positive character and, and how much more successful they can become when they have these positive character traits and how much more they can benefit uh, not just themselves but their families uh, and those who they interact with in a positive way because people you know we we will tend to leave a mark on society uh, one way or the other the goal is to be able to leave a positive mark on society uh, and if you're going to be remembered by something, you want to be remembered by the positive things, the positive choices that you made, and the positive way in which you affected people. I remember some, um, I think it was, uh, I remember if it was um, Dale Carnegie or one of these other motivational speakers, they said, you know, people won't always remember what you say, but they will remember how you treated them. You know, they'll remember how you treated them. And so it's important that, that we keep in mind uh, these things that we're, that we're learning, you know, the effective communication and the acceptance of ourselves and others. And, of course, we're going to build on, <clears throat> build on from there as we pick up with next class, um, picking up on um, lesson plan one, page E, uh, under the purpose and objective, uh, which will be um, this upcoming Wednesday. Uh, June 16th. Yes, this will be uh, 6, 16 will be our next class at 5.30 Central Standard Time. So I hope everyone joins us. And again, uh, I would encourage you to bring your, your not only your acceptance unit, uh, but also your character unit so we can continue to tie this in. And again, if you don't have it, you can find it on the, our uh, Facebook page. You can download that, that uh, acceptance unit right there on our, on our, our home page so that you can follow along as we move forward in this course. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful evening.